So the product that I'm reviewing today, I don't really know how to go about it. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a product marketed quite like this ever. And I just don't know how to go about today's review. <laughs> so let me go over the details and then I want to experiment a little. This is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin. We just got the Yummy Skin Serum Foundation and Primer. But it's the Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder. Like what? It's a balm, but they call it a powder. So first of all, shout out to Camera Ready Cosmetics. They sent me a bunch of shades that I'm gonna be able to show you guys. They got it to me the day that it launched, which is awesome. If you don't know, Camera Ready Cosmetics does carry Danessa Myricks. This product right now is currently available on the Danessa Myricks website, Camera Ready Cosmetics, and Beautylish. I think it's coming to Sephora on the second. So I will have all the links down below. But if you do shop at Camera Ready Cosmetics, if you use the code Morgan Turner at checkout that will save you 10% off so just thought I'd throw that out there and again huge shout out to camera ready cosmetics for supporting my channel this is not a sponsored video by the way they just are supporting my channel and sent this to me so thank you it's a big help so let's talk about what this is <laughs> it is a texture reducing coverage boosting blurring balm that balances oil throughout the day while maintaining hydration their claim to fame on this is that this formula has a super ingredient, Upsolite, which is supposed to balance and absorb excess sebum and sweat while maintaining skin's hydration. But this is where it gets confusing, guys. You can use this however you want. You can use it alone as a primer underneath your foundation. You can use it to set your foundation, or you can use it as foundation. And there's some that are tinted, so you can use that to add coverage to your foundation, and then they have a universal shade that I'm going to show you today. I don't know. That's why we need to play. So there are 10 colored shades in this range. They're supposed to be sheers. So a lot of the shades can be used for multiple skin tones. And then there is one universal shade. So Camera Ready Cosmetics sent me shades universal one, two, and three. Let me show you the box first. <laughs> and even on the box, it's like you can use this for the eyes too. I just, I need to feel this product. I don't even know how to test it today. So so this is really a first impressions. Don't go off of my review alone because I'm a little confused. I'm gonna have to update you in like literally two weeks before I can give you my thoughts, I think. This is made in China. It has a 12 month shelf life. Here is what the component looks like. I love that we have this built-in paddle. Like you can't lose this. I think this is so smart. As you know, Danessa Myricks typically creates her products with the makeup artist in mind. This keeps everything sanitary. She is definitely hitting the consumer market now with these products it's not just makeup artists and here is the back if you need to look at the ingredients or anything they're really hidden home with the upsalate upsalite okay anyways how do you open this okay, it's a twist open then here's what it looks like this is supposed to be a powder but this is a balm right okay I'm gonna touch it yeah, it feels wet like a balm look at the wrinkles on my hand let's see if this does anything Huh. As you blend it in, I do feel like it kind of dries down. Normally, I wouldn't swatch all of the colors, but I feel like you can use this for highlighting and whatnot. And if you're trying to find the shade for you, hopefully this helps. So this is shade number one. See, they feel really wet and dewy like a balm. I think number three should be my shade. Here's number two. This one is kind of yellowy. And I think I'm number three, right? Well, I don't want to say they've dried down to like a powder finish, but they've hardened, but it's not as like wet feeling anymore. I don't know what to do with this. I am going to first start off with the universal shade to see what it does. Let's see. <laughs> I have the lights down, so it's not the most flattering on my skin, but I want you to see everything. I've already been unsanitary and dug my fingers in, but now I'm trying to take that back in. Let's be sanitary. So they say to just apply this with the fingers. Danessa also said you can use it with a brush. So it starts off feeling like a balm, and I have nothing but sunscreen underneath. So you can use this underneath your makeup to prime, but you can also use it on top to set, I guess because it has that dry down. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It made my skin feel really 
smooth. It's not powdery feeling on my skin, but like you can feel it dry down to almost like a non-slick silicone feeling is the best way that I can describe it. You know how silicone, you can feel it, but it's a little slick. It feels like silicone, but not as slick. Oh my gosh, and it's definitely dried down. Like it's not a wet product anymore. This is so weird. I feel like it mattified my face. I don't necessarily know that it blurred anything like it claims, but this is not even a review. I have no clue what I'm talking about, you guys. <laughs> this product is weird. Okay, let's give that a break. I'm gonna leave the rest on the spatula to see if it dries down a little bit. I want to try shade three now, and let's see how much coverage we get. So I'm gonna put it on my spatula. I'm gonna rub it on my hand real quick. Okay, so you can use a sponge for this. Like, look at this. Look, it's like a cream foundation. Okay, let's see how much coverage. Okay, I'm probably shade four, but shade three will work on me. Ooh, I kind of like using my fingers with this, which is something I almost never say, but it's really blending with such ease on my fingers. Whoa, I've never felt anything like this in my life. So confused. You can even use the tinted one before you apply your foundation as a way to add extra coverage and prime the skin and kind of get your textures right. I don't think I like it on its own, like as foundation. I don't know if you can see right here, but it looks a little dry. I'm gonna try with a brush to blend it in. It added a light coverage though, like you can see it even things out. But the finger application, I don't know about. Let me I'm probably gonna take this off and start from scratch after this. I just needed to play with this to see. So the only thing is I feel like this is kind of struggling to be not streaky looking on my skin and it it doesn't look even no matter what i do i feel like i can't get it to have a non-streaky finish with both my fingers and the brush which kind of leaves me wanting to put foundation on top of this and then seeing if i can set with this but i feel like let me put this all over now <laughs> i'm just gonna put the rest on where's my makeup sponge i have a damp makeup sponge let's see if a sponge makes a difference so remember, I do have the universal underneath on this side. There is a bit of a learning curve with this product, which is why I'm testing it out now to try and help you. Wait, okay, the sponge application though? Yeah, no, the brush was not working. I felt like it just kept moving the product everywhere and it would never set and give a skin like smooth finish it just looked really streaky the sponge is definitely giving the most even application in my opinion huh <laughs> I need somebody to teach me how to use this. Okay, so sponge is the way to go. And the side that I applied it with the sponge looks really, really good. Like it feels really lightweight on the skin. The fact that you can put foundation over top of this is kind of weird. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. For testing purposes, I'm gonna put some of the Yummy Skin Serum Foundation on top. And then I wanna try setting with the Universal. And then I'm taking it all off and I'm going to wear the balm in shade number three all day today on its own. So first, let's take a little bit of the Serum Foundation Yummy Skin, which I really do like this, but please remember less is more with this product. I'm interested in seeing if the blurring powder, whatever underneath affects anything. So what I think the purpose of that would be is if you are oily, since that key ingredient in the Danessa Myricks is supposed to keep your oils at bay, you definitely need a lot less foundation if you're using this underneath. I have a lot of the balm underneath. I feel like it's blending in nicely. I'm just gonna do it on this side. See if anything looks different or really heavy. Huh, I'm surprised. I thought layering the foundation on top would be too much, but it gave me extremely full coverage. And that foundation gives a lot of coverage to begin with. Ah, oh, I want somebody with oil oily skin to review this. If you have oily skin, can you wear this underneath your foundation and then put your favorite foundation on top and tell me if the wear time changes? <laughs> I'm so confused. There's so many different ways to review this. Wow, okay. So I feel like the foundation has dried. So by the way, the universal that I left on the spoon or whatever earlier, it still is like balmy. Now let's see when we put the universal on top, if it moves anything or makes anything weird. I feel like I want to set my face real fast. Let's give this a chance just in case. Okay, let's try and put it on top, I guess. Okay, no. 
This is like ruining everything. Let me try it with the sponge then. So I just blended it on the back of my sponge. <sighs> yeah, if you're gonna layer on top, definitely use a sponge to push it in because the fingers literally just ruined everything and I have to come back and mesh everything together with the sponge. I mean, my skin looks good, right? <laughs> the yummy skin makes my skin look good. I'm not sure about this universal one. I think if you're oily, you will like the universal one, but if you're dry like me, I don't think you need the universal one. But here's how it looks with just the number three balm on its own. And then here, here it looks on this side with everything, the universal underneath, the three on top, the yummy skin on top, and then <laughs> the universal on top. It doesn't look too thick given all the layers. But I think the best way for me to understand this product for this first wear test is to wear the number three on its own. And I just wanna see how long it lasts since it's supposed to help my oils because you can wear the Universal on its own as well. And then in the next few days, I will definitely be testing this in other capacities. But let me take this off and let's get the official application on. As I was washing my face, it took a few moments to collect my thoughts on this because yes, the first few minutes of this video was a disaster. <laughs> I was like, what is this product? <laughs> I think this product will be most beneficial to those with oily skin, particularly the universal product just to keep your oils at bay since it is a more dry formula, which you saw when I wore the balm on its own in the streaks, it was not looking good on my dry patches so if you have dry skin like me you make sure you prep the skin before because even though I have dry skin I do live in a humid climate and summer is coming so a product like this would still be beneficial to those of us with dry skin because we're, we're gonna get a little sweaty in these warmer months but you do need to make sure the texture of your skin is nice and hydrated and prepped before you use a product like this. I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream to really nicely prep the skin. The one thing I'm really unsure about is using this on top of foundations. It was able to work with the yummy skin, but I feel like with a texture like this, you might need to be picky with what foundations you do that with because I can see some not liking the texture at all and it will ruin everything. So just be careful with that. It worked fine with the yummy skin, but I had to work it in. And I'm not sure in terms of longevity how it is going to do with oils. I'm also not the best person to judge that considering I have more dry skin. I want to apply this as I normally would. I'm liking the coverage that it gives on its own anyways, but actually, okay, I'm going to take the universal first and I want to put this in my T-zone where we're a little bit more textured on one side of my face to see if I'm able to see a difference on how, I don't know, I have no clue. Let's just put it there. So I'm just gonna use my fingers on this side and I'm gonna put it in my T-zone. I guess it is kind of redundant to do this since I have this exact same formula that I'm gonna put over top that's tinted. So maybe not. But if you plan on using this formula as a primer, if that's how it ends up working well, then I would suggest the universal shade. And you can also use it as a primer underneath your foundation with a tint, but that would add more coverage. Depends if you want that. Okay, now we're going into number three. So I'm gonna start off slow and steady. I'm blending it on the back of my hand. We're gonna spread it out. I love how it spreads with the finger though. Breaking out, I think I used Something that my skin didn't like. I have a damp beauty blender now. I cleaned it off from using the serum foundation since it had some leftover product on there. So I did clean that. Yo, this zit right here is looking uglier by the hour. <laughs> okay, so this is one pretty light coat. I'm gonna go in directly with the sponge that I put on the back of my hand. And that's gonna give me a little bit more coverage. One thing I will give credit to for this product is no matter how many layers I seem to do with this, it feels lightweight, like no matter what. I feel like I could do 10 layers of this and it would still just be like one light layer of makeup, which I think is crazy how it literally melts into the skin. Cause it starts off thick, but then it just melts right in. Sponge is by far my favorite way to apply this. If you have oily skin, 
It might be different for you, but I feel like with my fingers or with a brush or anything else, um, it really makes the product soak into any dryness or pores or anything like that. With the sponge, I feel like it really gives it that finish that I like. So we have one good layer of the product down, and then I would say another half layer on spots that I wanted to touch up with. Okay, I definitely think I have this product figured out now. It was fun in the beginning, but I think I can work my way around this. But I'm feeling a little bit more confident on how to work this. So here's what it looks like. I, I think it looks really nice right now. It looks very natural. It's like a light coverage, even to everything out. Let's see how it plays with other makeup. I don't plan on powdering. I might in the T-zone a little bit since I'm gonna put some concealer on. I'm definitely gonna leave the camera on for application, so let's go. It'll be interesting to see how a brush with bronzer and stuff work on top of that. So I'm gonna leave the camera on so you can see what I'm using and how it's going. So she also said that you can use this as an eye primer. So I'm going to try that today. <laughs> I don't know, let's see. So makeup is done, I experimented with a couple different things. So I know you probably aren't supposed to put powder on top. Danessa doesn't necessarily recommend it, but I love powder. So I just powdered this side of my face to see what would happen. It doesn't feel overly dry on my dry skin at all. And you know, the powder did its work with blurring and whatnot. So I think it looks really good though on this side, no powder. I actually went in with the number one shade balm and put it on top of my concealer to see if that makes a difference at all. I mean, the side that has the powder looks better than the side that I put the number one on. And then I did use powder, bronzer, and blush because that's what I mostly use on an everyday basis anyways. I just feel like it helps with my sweatiness. <laughs> no, but I think everything looks really nice. It looks really lightweight. It doesn't feel drying. Since I prepped my skin good, it doesn't look dry. The only thing to note is I still liked setting it with a powder, but we're gonna see as the day goes on I'm gonna go for a walk. I need to check in my rain actually But I want to go on like a 30 minute walk and then Jose and I are getting dinner tonight So yeah, here is the look At everything it is such an interesting product you guys <laughs> definitely a learning curve at least for me I'm gonna show you how it looks on my iPhone and then we will begin the wear test Okay, and then here is a closer look On my iPhone. I think everything looks really great and natural right now. So I'm excited to see how this does Wait, okay, I lied. I just looked back at that footage. I will say, yeah, my skin looks a little dry, slightly concerning, but I feel like as the day goes on and my natural oils come through, I'm not that worried yet, yet. It is six o'clock. I did not go on the walk that I said I was gonna go on, but I wanted to show you how the I don't even know if I should call it a foundation. How this balm thing has settled onto my skin. So you can say it has started to settle into the fine lines right here. Not that big of a deal. Most, like 90% of foundations do that. And it looks a little dry, I'm not gonna lie. Along here, you'll see it looks dry on the outer parts. That's been the norm with foundations lately. That's something I gotta figure out. But 
it looks good. I want to sweat a little bit more to kind of hydrate or if I weren't doing a full wear test, I would definitely use a setting spray to add a little bit of extra hydration, but it doesn't feel dry. It doesn't even look extremely dry. This is just with me looking up close on a magnetized mirror. I still think it looks nice. I'm still preferring the side where I use one of my favorite powders to set, but it still looks good on the unset side. My under eyes look a wee bit better in terms of the fine line happening where I sat with the powder so <laughs> I know Danessa kind of suggests against using powder but if you just use a little bit just one that you like make sure it's a powder that softens and blurs the skin one that you like what it does to the skin make sure you use a touch of that and I feel like it's holding in place a little better so I'm going to go for a walk eventually. <laughs> Jose and I are going to go, go have dinner, maybe grab something for dessert, and I will update you later this evening. But so far, I think it's wearing really nice. It feels really, really great for every day. But my fellow dry skin girls, you're definitely going to want to prep the skin properly, but it's not off limits for us. And then oily skin girls, I have a feeling you're going to be all over this. So I'll check in in a few. So it's been well over eight hours. I have to say the makeup has worn very gracefully. Taking a closer look, I mean, I think the side that's powdered looks a little bit more blurred, but the side that's not powdered, I think still wore really well. Since I was eating and whatnot, it's kind of come off around my mouth, but that's to be expected. But I mean, everything looks pretty good, all things considered. My blush is still vibrant. I can see my bronzer. Even on my eyes, remember, I use it as an eyeshadow primer. There's not any creasing. So actually, that's really nice. Even though there, it was a bit of a rocky beginning, I like this. It's not made for dry skin. You have to prep your skin properly. I'm going to wear this a few more times and I'm going to do it as I would knowing that it doesn't work best on dry skin. So lots of moisturizer, moisturizing primer, hydrating glowy mist, all of that good stuff. And I really want to see how it wears, but it still worked out pretty well for me. But my oily skin girls, I think you will really enjoy this. Application is a bit tricky if you're going to use it as a foundation. You have to find the best way that works for you. For me, like I said, the sponge works great. It's arguable, you know, is it worth it if application is tricky, but I think it wore really well. I think this is a new style of product to the market. I mean, I know I don't own anything like it, and I do like the idea of the versatility. I think it looked really smooth on the skin. Not sure about the universal color and using that as a primer. If you have dry skin, I, j I just don't think there's a point to the, to the universal. You're better off just getting tinted. But I'd be interested to see somebody with oily skin using the universal shade as a primer to see if that makes a difference. This is definitely a product that I'm going to have to continue testing more to give you my final, final thoughts. But I hope even though I didn't know what I was doing at the beginning with this, that this video was helpful. We could learn together more about the product because it's so weird. It's such a weird product, but all in all, I think it's really nice as like an everyday foundation to throw on when you don't want to feel like you're wearing heavy makeup and maybe it's a hot day. I think this is gonna be good for hot days, especially, I'm telling you, I know she doesn't encourage you to use powder, but the area that I powdered, I mean, it looks flawless. Like it really kept everything in place super good and you'll see where i use it as concealer it's definitely a little bit more creasy than where i powdered with my armani concealer so just keep that in mind yeah <laughs> this was interesting i'm gonna circle back because i don't feel quite satisfied in this review i need 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 to test all of the capabilities that this product has so thank you guys so much for liking this video and being subscribed to my channel I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys, have a good one.